Okay. The answer is, I think everybody's seen it already, <laughs> but <laughs> Rebecca, uh, Isak's wife, she's, she's who come next. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about Rebecca, Isak's wife. So the story starts off in Genesis 24. Two through four says, and Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, could I pray thee thy hand under my thigh? You know, and this was a way that they used to make people swear, you know. And so we see in the next verse, Abraham go, continues on to say, and I will make thee swear by Yahuwah, the Elohim of heaven and the Elohim of earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites whom, uh, among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son, Yisak, or Isaac. You know, and so here it is. We see that Abraham did not want a son, um, his son, to have a wife of the people of the land. Mm -hmm. The people of what land? Canaan. Canaan, which represents what? The who? The low, the low country. Not what I'm looking for. Oh. The nations. The nations. Yeah, there were nations there, but no, that's not what I'm looking for. The kingdom of Elohim. Mm -hmm. oh. The land of Canaan typifies the kingdom of Elohim throughout scripture. That's right. You know, and so here it is. We see a picture of the father not wanting his son Isaac hmm. to have a wife from the kingdom of Elohim. Hmm. Hmm. Can you see that? Yeah. It, you know, hmm. so um, Abraham can be likened unto whom? Say again. Yes, his name means father of many nations, but who is he likened unto? Yeah. Yeah. Yahuwah, the heavenly father. Isaac, the son. Who is he likened to? Yeah. 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 And in Yahshua's life, he acquiesced to being sacrificed by his father, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now here, here's the thing. Yah doesn't want to take a bride for his son Isaac, i.e. Yahshua, mm -hmm. from the people of the land, from the kingdom of Elohim. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Can't see that? Yeah. From the land of Cain, right. which represents the kingdom of Elohim. Now, I know it sounds a bit contradictory, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's just a show of a of a larger picture. Mm -hmm. You know, now, so he tells his head servant you know, to go in and get his son a wife, you know, and make him promise not to take one um, of, of the land that they're in, but to go to his country, to go to his country, you know, uh, and, and get, get him a wife, you know, and so from whence he came from, you know, and so here it is, we see in Genesis 15, two and three, it says, and Abram said, and Abram said, Adonai Yahuwah, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childish, and the steward of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one in my house is born my heir. You know, now, the reason that I, I point this out is so that we'll know who this steward was, um, who this eldest servant was that he was sending out on this mission. It was Eleazar of Damascus. Now, Eleazar, his name means the help of Elohim. 
or the helper of Elohim. Mm -hmm. You know, and he is a type of the Ruach HaKodesh. He is a type of the Ruach HaKodesh, the comforter, the spirit of truth, who is the helper of Elohim. You know, and Abram said, you know, verse three, and Abram said, behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is my heir. So he was born in Abraham's house, um, and he was the steward of his house, you know, meaning that he had he had access to everything that he had, you know, and so this is what we see depicted in Genesis 24, 10, you know, that confirms that this was speaking to his steward. It says, and the servant took 10 camels of the camels of his master and departed for all the goods of his master was in his hand. And so we not, that's what lets us know we're dealing with his steward, you know, uh, for his steward had all the, all the goods in his of his master in his hand and it says he arose and went to mesopotamia unto the children of nahor and he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening even the time that women go out to draw water and there is just like so much mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. in this passage in these two verses mm -hmm. it is crazy you know so mm -hmm. first of all uh, we're going we're gonna to break it down, though, So, because this is um, discipleship training. Mm -hmm. So I want you to be able to, to, to do this on your own. So it says, and the servant took 10 camels. So first, let's deal with the number 10. What does the number 10 represent? Um, All. Yeah. What else? That's yeah, real. Not necessarily, yeah. It um it represents law and responsibility. It also represents full maturity. Yes, and so here it is. We see that we're talking about, you know, fully mature. Um, some 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 folks that was fully mature in the law and responsibility of Elohim. Mm -hmm. You know, which is uh, essentially Torah, right? And especially at this time, you know. Now, and then it says camels. Mm -hmm. So it's 10 camels. And so in order to really see this, we need to know what camels represent. Mm -hmm. You know, and camels, you know, they speak to worldly rationale or worldly way of thinking. You know, they also speak to the repentant, you know, those who have, you know, repented of something or those who have reconsidered, you know, and, and repented, you know, and they also can speak to uh, travelers such as uh, merchants or evangelists or missionaries you know and so here it is we see that Eleazar, Eleazar um, has made his camels to kneel down now this word the uh, worst word that's translated as kneel down is interesting because it's Barak you know actually you know um, where we get to bless from you know meaning to to bless, to bless is to kneel, kneel down before one or to submit to them. You know, and so here it is, we see the camels, we see these ones that's that that are actually fully mature in the law and responsibility of Elohim. You know, we see some fully mature uh, folks that's uh, fully mature in the law and responsibility of Elohim that that have repented or are filled with worldly uh, rationale, bless them, the most high. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? You know, with them kneeling down and blessing the most high. Mm -hmm. You know, now, and they're by a well of water. Mm -hmm. And we know what water represents, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, true counsel, 
you know, both of them apply because it's a well of water. So it's drinking water. So it does speak to our council as well as true, you know. And so, and then it says at the time of the evening, you know, so evening is when the light is being, uh, one day is being extinguished and going into the darkness, right? Yes. You know, and it says that it's the time when women go out to draw water, you know, so they're going out to draw water, to draw truth, right? Mm -hmm. Anybody with me? Yep. All right, so this is picture we're looking at. And just, uh, mm -hmm. you know, before we go further, I just want to show you kind of the um, the nature of this picture. So it's mm -hmm. first the natural, um, then the spiritual. Hence, this is a picture of spiritual Rebecca or the setting for spiritual Rebecca, you know, because... Here it is, we have, this is what the mission is. The mission is to go get a bride for Isaac, right? Or go get a bride for Yahshua. You know, we can look at it in uh, in, in that light as well. Mm -hmm. You know, and so uh, in order to see the symbolism within the camel, mm -hmm. you know, um, I put a few things up here. So, you know, we're gonna look at the nature of the camel. The camel has three stomachs to store water. Mm -hmm and humps to store nutrients. Now, camels can have one or two humps. This one so happened to have two humps. Mm. We have a two-humped camel. Yes. You know, um, they consume mostly thorny um, foliage, mm. and they chew the cud. Now, all these things speak to worldly rationale and or understanding, you know, um, and that's worldly rationale and or understanding based upon history and or experience. You know, so the way as you look at this is, you know, the stomachs that store the water is storing truth. The humps that store the nutrients are storing teachings and instructions. You know, they consume mostly thorny foliage. The thorny foliage represents the cares of this world. You know, Yahshua taught us that, right? Thorns and thistles uh, represents the cares of this world. And they chew the cut. Now, the chew the cut uh, is when an animal eats, mm -hmm. and then it later regurgitates it and eats the um the meal and eat it again. Mm -hmm. Now, within this, spiritually uh, speaking, within this, you can see where one has consumed some teachings and instructions or drank some truth, mm -hmm. and then they regurgitate and they begin to think about it again and they begin to re-eat it, mm -hmm. you know? And so this is a, um, a beautiful picture of repentance, you know, where one regurgitate what they knew and begin to think different, you know? And also of understanding, you know, how, how many of you have ever tried to understand something you couldn't quite get it and so you just left it alone for a while and then you picked it up later and then all of a sudden it comes clear you know that's another picture of chewing the cut you know and so that said they perfectly depict the repented they can also typify travelers such as merchants or evangelists or even missionaries because that is their nature they travel long distances they're made to do so mm -hmm. they literally have their own gas tanks mm -hmm. you know um, camels can go months without eating mm -hmm. you know several months without 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 eating and can go really, really long time, more than you know any other animal in this class without water, because it has its own storage tank. You know, and so this is the nature of the camel. So I want you to be able to see that, so you can be able to see this picture of what's happening when Rebecca comes. When she comes, she sees these ten camels, you know, and they're kneeling down. So spiritually speaking, there she's seen these fully mature, these these folks that are fully mature um, in the law and responsibility of Elohim and their blessing Elohim. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're by a well 
of water or thereby a well of truth, you know, or a well of counsel. You know? And they're there at the time when the women go out to draw water. Now, Yahshua said, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. You know, and so when we're talking about the evil, if Yahshua was the light of the world, then the evening can't come until after he's left. Can you can you see that? You know, now just as when the evening comes, it doesn't get dark immediately. It gradually gets dark, right? You know, and this is why before he left, he would tell his disciples, ye are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. And if you understand this, that light represents wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. So Yahshua was the wisdom, understanding, and knowledge that brought forth life, you know, or light to the world, you know, and he imparted that into his disciples, you know, who would then become his apostles that he would send forth into the world to light the world, right? You know, but just as when Yahshua passed, you know, it got a bit darker when the um, apostles passed, mm -hmm. night came. Everybody following me? Yeah. You know, this is why you see in Joshua 24, 31, which is uh, another type of Yahshua. It says, in Israel served Yahuwah all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua and which had known all the works of Yahuwah that he had done for Israel. See, and you'll see like a pattern throughout the book of Judges that every time all the people that that knew the judge and seen the excerpts of the judge, when they died out, that's when things got dark again. And that's when all the chaos and the trouble will begin in Israel, you know, because the light was extinguished. Can you see that? And so Yah will raise up another light or judge. You know, even as Yahshua is also called a judge and he will judge the world. Amen. You know, so I want you to be able to see the, this, this picture and the depiction that's, that's being played out here, you know, because Yahshua was the light, you know, and when he left, the only light that was left was was in those that he imparted that light. And when they died out. Unfortunately, the light all but died. It became nighttime. There was still some sparkles in the sky. There was still those who had faith representing the moon, you know, and children, you know, of, of those with faith representing the stars. But essentially, it was dark in the world. It was nighttime. Can you see that? You know, um, and so that's that's what happened. And it's important that you see that, because if you can't see that, then you're not going to be able to see Rebecca. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we go on to Genesis 24, 12 through 14. Let me have my first reader read Genesis 24, 12 through 14. And he said, oh, Yahuwah, Elohim of my master, Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels to drink also. Let the same be she, that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac, and thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. Hallelujah. Okay, so 
Eleazar says, behold, I stand here by the well of water. You know, so he's standing by the uh, covenant of the covenant of truth, you know, because the well, um, the word well is berith, which actually speaks to a covenant, you know, and so here it is. He's standing by the well of water or covenant of, of truth, if you would, and the daughters of the men of the city come to draw water. And he says, let it come to pass that the damsel, the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee that I may drink, and she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. So he set up a test, you know, in other words, you know, so that he would know when Yah has blessed his journey, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, now, I want to show you a depiction of this when Yahshua came, you know, because he too went by a well mm -hmm. and asked a woman that came forth for some water. Mm -hmm. And I want to show you how far away from Rebecca she was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, John 4, 7 says, there come up a woman of Samaria to draw water, you know, and Yahushua said, now this was the uh, well of Yaakov, you know, and it says that Yahshua stopped there because he he was he was weary. And so, you know, his apostles, they kept going and they went and, went and got food, you know, but he was he was sitting there and it says, and there come up a woman of Samaria to draw water. Yahushua saith unto her, give me drink. And it says, for his disciples were going away unto the city to buy meat, excuse me, to buy food. You know, then say of the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou being a, a Yahudim, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Yahudim have no dealings with the Samaritans. Hmm. Can you see that that was the wrong answer? Yeah. Because Eleazar said, you know, and she shall say drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. But she said, why are you asking me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? You know, so this, can you see that this woman of the land responded with the wrong answer? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, she was a woman of the land. She was a Sumerian. So she she um, actually um, lived in the land of Canaan. She lived in the kingdom of Elohim. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. She had the wrong answer. She responded with the wrong answer. If we continue on in Yochanan 4, 13 and 14, it says, Yahushua answered and said unto her, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again anyway. Mm -hmm. and, well, he ain't say anyway. Um, <laughs> but it goes on to say in verse 14, but whosoever drink of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in a well, be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Right? You know, now, so she answered with the wrong answer. And then verse 18 tells us, you know, um, she gone, she she asked him for some of that water. He said, go get your husband. You know, and she said, well, she don't have a husband. And so we pick it up at verse 18. He says, for thou, uh, for thou, he says, you surely told the truth, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And that said, is thou truly? So in other words, She's not a virgin, right? You know, so she don't meet that criteria either. She didn't have the right answer. Hmm. She nowhere near a virgin, far from it. You know, having five husbands and, and, you know, and with a guy now that's not her husband, hmm. right? You know, and I also want to call your, call your attention to this well of water springing up into everlasting life that that uh, Yahshua was talking about. You know, he speaks of it again in Yochanan 7, 37 through 39. It says, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Yahushua stood and cried saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Mm -hmm. And he that believeth on me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. You know, but then it says, but this spake he of the Ruach, 
which they that believe on him should receive. For the Kodesh Ruach was not yet given because that Yahushua was not yet glorified, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, this is that water that you'll never thirst again, you know, that he was speaking of. It only comes through the Ruach, you know. Now, if we go back to where the woman at the well was, she says, uh, well, Yah says, Yahshua says, and I will pray to Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Oh, I'm sorry, this is John 14, 16, 17. And I will pray um, the Father, and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the rock of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it see of him not, neither know of him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So here it is, this Ruach HaKodesh that will cause this well of water springing up into everlasting life, you know, is uh, the comforter, this spirit of truth. And so, you know, which would, uh, is likened unto Eleazar. You know, this is why he couldn't come until after Yahshua had been crucified. Because Abraham did not send Eleazar to go get Isaac a bride until after the would-be crucifixion or the would-be sacrifice. Everybody with me? Can you see that? You know, he didn't he didn't send Eleazar until after Isaac had already acquiesced to being sacrificed, but Yah intervened. Right? You know, so then we have. Genesis 24, 15, it says, and it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rebekah came out who was born of Beth Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother with her pitcher upon her shoulder. Now, Nahor speaks to one who's asleep. His name means snore. Hmm. You know, hmm. uh, it can also mean snorting. So you see some dictionaries that say snorting, some that say snore, hmm. you know. Um, so it speaks to one who's asleep. Yahushua, our king. He's one who had went to sleep, right? Mm -hmm. You know, now Milcah, his wife, speaks to the Levitical priesthood. Mm -hmm. And Bethuel speaks to those who are destroyed of Elohim, that is, the nation of Yahudah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so his wife was, you know, of course, a daughteress, you know, and you know, Bethuel, you know, was those who Yah would destroy and did destroy, you know, but they would give birth to Rebecca. Now, therefore, Rebecca will come out of the Yahudim during the time when the daughters of men come out to draw water. And Rebecca, her, name's mean, her name means ensnared, you know, and so she speaks to them are those that were or will be ensnared, you know, or fettered, if you would, you know. And so she will come after the sacrifice, after Isaac's sacrifice, for one. That's one thing that we know, you know. And so it's important that we be able to see the spiritual picture because we want to know when Rebecca show up, right? You know, and so Rebecca will come out of the Yahudim during the time when the daughters of men come out to draw water and Ruach HaKodesh will ask of her water to drink. Mm -hmm. So when she comes out, Ruach HaKodesh will be there and he will ask of her water to drink. But unlike the woman at the well during Yahshua's time, Genesis 24, 16 says, and the damsel was spared it to look upon a virgin. Neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And it goes on to say, and the servant ran to meet her and said, let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. You know, and so we're going to see how she answers. But I want to point out something that, like it tells us that it won't come, she won't come until the time of the evening 
you know, the time when women come out to to um to pour out water, to get their water, to draw out water. You know, and I want to call your attention to the constellation or the um of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. Or better put, the age of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. Because we're living during a time where we're at the end of the age of Pisces mm -hmm. and we're going into the age of Aquarius. And this can be likened unto what be what we're being told here in Genesis 24, you know, the woman who comes forth in the evening, mm -hmm. the time to draw the water. You know, and the water represents truth that's being poured out. And I think we all can see that there's a lot of there's a lot of um truth or information in general that's being poured out. You know, in our day and time, we see how fast technology is going forward. It's just mind boggling. Mm -hmm. You know, but I just wanted to call your attention to that this age, you know, um, of Aquarius could very well be being spoken of here. Mm -hmm. You know, just 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 as you know, the age of Taurus could have been being spoken of when Aaron made the golden calf. And the age of Pisces, when Yahshua went out and got all fishermen to do all his his um, his bidding and to become his disciples, you know, just showing you that these things, you know, are subtle hints mm -hmm. to what the ancients believed. Mm -hmm. You know, their wise men were astronomers. Mm -hmm. They were called wise because they were able to read the skies. You know, so say la. Mm -hmm. Genesis 24, 18 through 22. And she said, drink, my Lord. So she's answering them now. She said, drink, my Lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they are done drinking. So now we know the picture of the 10 camels. We know what they rep it represents now. So what is she giving them? She's giving them counsel. She's giving them truth, you know, which is what's represented by the water. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, so she's giving them drink. And when, when Eleazar is done drinking, she gives to the camels. Mm -hmm. So what we see here is a picture of the Ruach HaKodesh coming to her, testing her, you know, and then having, having her go unto others as well and to share this counsel or this good news or you know this this truth you know with with um those who are with her. and it says and when she had done giving them a drink she said i will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking mm -hmm. and it, it says she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again unto the well um to draw water and drew for all his camels now we know he had at least 10 cows. Probably had more than that, you know, because he was had to be riding something himself, right? And his men had to be riding something, you know. But it says, and the man wondering at her held his peace to wit whether Yahuwah had made his journey prosperous or not. And it says, and it came to pass as the camels done drinking, that the man took a golden earring of a half shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of 10 shekels weight of gold. And he, he, he gave it to Rebecca. You know, now the golden earring speaks to divine hearing and the golden bracelet speaks to divine works. Mm -hmm. Doing the works of Elohim specifically, you know, the law and responsibility of Elohim or Torah. You know, where do we get that from? The ten shekels, the ten, right? Mm -hmm. You know, now the spiritual picture being depicted here is an enormous job, an enormous job. The amount of time and effort it would have took for Rebecca to complete this task escapes the average reader. But when one considers that a camel can consume up to 30 gallons of water in as little as 13 minutes, you can see the magnitude of the task, mm. you know? 
if each one of those camels, we're going to be conservative. Say they drank 20 gallons a piece. Mm -hmm. How much running back and forth to the well is that? You understand? And then water is eight pounds a gallon. This is why he didn't care who she was. When she got done, he gave her the gifts. He didn't even know who she was at this point. But this is grace. A reciprocal system of favors. This is grace at play right here. She done something for him and he done something for her. Can you see the grace in that? Reciprocal system of favors. You know, so it didn't matter who she was. She was going to get the gifts because she had just done a great favor. She not only gave him water, she watered all his camels. Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, a camel can drink up to 30 gallons of water in mm -hmm. as little as 13 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, so even if we just say 20, that's 200 gallons of water. Yeah. Can you see that? That was a heck of a job. You know, and so the picture that's, that we're being shown is Rebecca, the spiritual Rebecca, has a big job to do. Mm -hmm. The spiritual Rebecca is actually spreading a whole lot of truth. Mm -hmm. She's going about spreading a whole lot of truth. And she hit yeah. all of those who are who are um fully mature, you know, in the law and responsibility of Elohim, fully mature in Torah, those who have repented of Torah, she's helping them to understand. She's giving them the truth. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. You know, and this is this is the one that's going to become Yahshua's bride. Mm -hmm. Not the woman of the land who, who was likened unto, you know, uh, an unsavory woman. We'll just put it that way. You know, so... Yeah, I want you to um, be able to see that picture because that's huge. Now, verse 61 says, and Rebecca rose, arose in her damsels and they rolled upon the camels and followed the man. And the servant took Rebecca and went his way. You know, and now so, you know, this is after dad said, yes, this is after, they, you know, they, they, uh, they came up with the purchase price and everything was accepted. You know, and she was going, leaving with him. I wanted to just point out that her damsels rode upon the 10 camels. Mm -hmm. That's why Eliezer brought her. Mm. You know, now I want you to think about the uh, parable of Yahshua and the 10 bridesmaids. Mm -hmm. You know, now this is simply a picture of Ruach Kakudesh leading Rebecca and her damsels into the kingdom of Elohim. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Leading them into the kingdom of Elohim. Mm -hmm. And when they get there, verse 62, it says, and Isaac came from the way of the well of Laharoi, for he dwelt in the south country. Now the well of Laharoi speaks to the well of the living or the covenant of the living. Mm -hmm. You know, now seeing that it's a well, what's, what's in the well? water. So can you see the well of living water in this picture? Yeah. yeah. This is the well of living water. This is this is what Yahshua was talking about. And Isaac, the one who's uh, who was the uh, the type and shadow of Yahshua is standing at the well of living water. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? And it said in verse 63, it says, and Isaac went out to meditate in the field at evening time. You know, and he lifted up his eyes and saw. Now, this is after. This is not the same time that the uh, woman that was was at the well. You know, eating tide is actually noon. You know, it's the sixth hour. You know, so it's it's, it's different than a rev, which is when Rebecca came. So this is this is uh, this is the next morning. So this is the next day. You know, in the noon the next day. You know, so 
uh, or maybe not the next day, but noon, whatever day they got there. I don't know how long, I mean, days it took them to travel. And it says, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were come. Mm -hmm. You know, and Rebecca lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. Mm -hmm. She jumped up off the camel, for she said unto, her, unto the servant, what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? Mm -hmm. And the servant had said, it is my master. Therefore, she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. Mm -hmm. Now, who remembers what Sarah represents? Yes, her name means princess, but what what um what does she represent? She represented the new covenant. Remember Galatians, you know, uh, you know the parable Hagar and Sarah. You know she represented the new covenant. So Isaac brought her into his mother's tent, into his mother's covenant, and took Rebecca, and she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. You know, so after his mother's death, you know, teaches us that there's going to come a time when that covenant will be, it's going to die. It will be forbidden. It will be, you know, cast away, you know, and just depending on how you look at it, you know, um, and the true understanding of it, you know, it's could be dead already from a lot of respects, you know, Nobody's really doing, it. you know. But say a lot on that. But mm -hmm. you know, I pray you can see the pictures that I've tried to, uh, that scripture was trying to paint for you, that I was trying to bring clarity to. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, that's all I have for you. Day prayer was a blessing. Mm -hmm.